Good morning, everyone. Starting us off this morning, leading us with the Pledge of Allegiance is the Sheldon Girl Scout 63738, joined by a member of the Georgia Pack 842 Cub Scouts. So, whenever you're ready. Thank you. Job well done. Now, if I could, I know you were standing once, but I'd ask you to stand if you so choose for a moment of silence for our members of the armed service who are serving, have served, or have committed the ultimate sacrifice. Thank you. <clears throat> All right, having said that, I'll just lead in with some introductions here on as to how this is going to go. Good morning and welcome to your 2024 Sheldon Town Meeting. Let me emphasize this is your town meeting of the body. Uh, I'll be reading through the articles. A few things I want you to know is uh, we do have some, some races here, not races, we have positions that are open for electable positions. Uh, nominations do not need a second. Every year people get up and second somebody else, I don't have a problem with that. Just to let you know, they don't need a second. Any, any, you can't hear this? You haven't heard me sing yet, Carrie. Okay, nominations, there we go. I didn't want to be too loud. Uh, nominations do not need a second. If you choose to second them, that's fine. Every year somebody does that anyways, not a big deal. If there's a contested race, it'll be done by ballot, and they'll have it set up, the A through the M's and, and whatever on this side here. Today's meeting is gonna be run under Robert's rules. That may not mean a whole lot to everybody here. It just so happens that happens to be my first name, but it's not my rules, okay? They're rules of parliamentary procedure. Uh, so having said that, I guess I would ask that we try to be respectful. We're all Sheldon residents, we're all neighbors. Uh, if you have a point to make, you know, please make it. Raise your hand if you have a question. I mean, when I recognize you, I, I prefer you, you, you state your name or whatever else, but once you've spoken, if there's other people who, who choose to speak, you'll not get a second chance to speak until everybody on the floor who has their hands raised has the opportunity to speak. And I will go back to you for a second time, if need be. So having said that, uh, I'm officially going to open up the 2024 Sheldon Town Meeting. That's my gavel. It appears to be somewhat of a short agenda this year. But having said that, Town of Sheldon annual meeting Tuesday, March 5th, 2024. The legal voters of the Town of Sheldon, Vermont are hereby warned and notified to meet at the Sheldon Elementary School, 78 Poor Farm Road, Sheldon Springs, Vermont, on Tuesday, March 5th, 2024 at 10 a.m. to transact the following business. Article one to elect the following town officers as required by law. A, a moderator for a one-year term. B, select board member for a three-year term. C, a select board member for a two-year term. D, a library trustee for a five-year term. And E, a delinquent tax collector for a one-year term. Article two, to act upon the reports of the town officers. Article three, shall the voters authorize the town treasurer to collect current taxes pursuant to 32 VSA 4791. Article four, shall the voters authorize town highway 
fund and general fund expenditures of $2,014,123, of which $1,392,604 shall be raised by taxes. Article 5, discussion of other non-binding business. So having said that, we will move back to Article 1A to elect the following town officers as required by law. A, a moderator for a one-year term. Nominations are now open. Robert Norris has been nominated for moderator for a one-year term. <laughs> and we have a second. <laughs> Thank you, Nancy. <laughs> okay, Robert Norris has been nominated for moderator for a one-year term. Are there any other nominations? Are there any other nominations? Seeing that, I will close the nominations for the moderator for a term of one year. Having said that, without objection, I'll have the clerk cast one ballot for Robert Norris. Thank you, once again. Just so you know, this is my 12th year going into this. And you've, <clears throat> what's that? Oh yeah, yeah. Anyways, thank you very much, I appreciate that. Article 1B, select board member for a three-year term. Are there any nominations? Nominate Nick, Norris. Nick Norris has been nominated. Second. And we have a second. And third. <laughs> Nick Norris has been nominated for a select board member for a term of three years. Are there any other nominations? Seeing no other nominations, I will close the nomination for the term of select board for a three-year term. And without objection, I will ask the town clerk to cast one ballot for Nicholas Norris. Thank you. Article 1C, select board member for a two-year term. Nominations are now open. Yes. I nominate Steve Dodd. Steve Dodd has been nominated for a two-year term. And Steve Dodd has been seconded for a two-year term. Any other nominations? Seeing no other nominations, the nominations for select board member for a two-year term have been closed. Without objection, I will ask the town clerk to cast one ballot for Stephen Dodd. Article 1D, a library trustee for a five-year term. The nominations are now open. Nancy? John Patterson. John Patterson has been nominated for the term of library trustee for a five-year position. Are there any other nominations? Jane Lanza has been nominated for library trustee for a term of five years. Are there any other nominations? Having none. <clears throat> Yes. Jessica, Jessica Draper. Jessica Draper has been nominated. Are there any other nominations? Are there any other nominations? Having said that, I will officially close the nominations for library trustee for a five-year term. Are all of those individuals present here? Jan Lanza. John Patterson. John, would you care to just step up and introduce yourself or stand up?
Thank you. And Jessica Draper. All right, it appears that Jane and Jessica are not here. John is. So having said that, what are they? Uh, huh? It's got to be my ballot. Right, but which is A through the B? Let me ask the question, then. That's right. I've got the A. A through? Okay, <clears throat> last names A through J will come to this side of the table and the rest of you go to this side of the table. Nominations are closed, this will be done by ballot. So you have Jane Lanza, John Patterson, and Jessica Draper.
If anybody hasn't voted, we're going to be closing the polls. Last call for votes. Thank you very much. The polls are now closed.
Did it come up to 58, 11, 14, no, no. This is six? Six spoiled. Oh, six spoiled. 68 cast. That's the number. Yep. I'm going to make a technical correction here when we go back online. This guy's name is not John Patterson. It's John Stryker. His girlfriend slash fiance is Patterson. And if somebody has a problem with that, I'm going to ask for another vote. Okay. okay. Yep. Because he came through. He's, he's in the... Is he in a striker? It's a striker. Yeah. He came up to tell me afterwards. They said, why did you jump up and correct that when the floor was open? Yeah. They've started their voting now. I can't correct that. <clears throat> The voting is done. Uh, I have to make a technical technical correction so that you all know this. That if someone has a problem with it, we will simply vote again. Uh, once the voting started, John came up and brought to my attention that his last name is not Patterson. That's his girlfriend slash fiance's last name. His last name is John Stryker. So if somebody has, and, and the, the voting came in as John Patterson, so I just want to bring this to your attention. If somebody has a problem with that, now's the time to mention it, and we will vote again on John Stryker, Jane Lanza, and Jessica Draper. What's your pleasure? <clears throat> if no one has a problem, with that, I just wanted to bring that to your attention, folks, because I wasn't aware of it either until John came up and... We'll, we'll leave it at that. <laughs> okay, having said that, moving forward, there's a total of 58 votes cast. Would they need to, just the just majority, or did they need a percentage on it? Just a majority vote on this is all that's needed. John Patterson, AKA Stryker, <laughs> received 38 votes. Jane Lanza received 11 votes. Jessica Draper received three votes, and there were six votes spoiled. So John Patterson, AKA Stryker, is, has been elected to a five-year term for library trustee. Congratulations. <clears throat> All right, moving along. Article 1E, delinquent tax collector, for a one-year term. Are there any nominations? Nancy. Kim Dufresne for a tax clerk for a term of one year. And we have a second. And we have a second. Are there any other nominations for a tax collector for a term of one year? Seeing no nominations, we're closing the nominations, and without objection, I will ask the clerk to cast one ballot for Kimberly Dufresne for task but for term of one year. Congratulations, I guess. Huh? <laughs> Article 2. To act upon the reports of the town officers. Open for discussion. The motion is made to accept the reports of the town officers. Is there a second? Second by Andy Crane. Having said that, is there any discussion? <coughs> Brian Derry. I'd like to know what the balance is in the checking account is. Does this does this work? There you go. Hold on, hold on. The balance in the checking account is that top number, but the balance below that is all of the accounts, the due to from accounts that we have set up. 
Okay, so for those who can't hear, <clears throat> Mr. Derry was asking what the balance in the checking account was and the response was? The response is, um, microphone. total is in the checking account is the 1974000 but we do two from is the I guess the question is, Brian, which number are you referring to? Make it a little easy for us, because which is that number added to that number doesn't help me either. So, which is the one million nine hundred seventy-four thousand? That's what's in the checking account, correct? Received to date. Does somebody else understand the book? <clears throat> I've asked what the balance in the checking account is at the at the end of the year. That's when you were told it was one one nine seven four. That is the balance of the checking. So we take that number minus that number, so it's within the check-in account. It's all in the check-in account. But that is what's set up in the, the separate funds. Yeah, speaking to the mic so I can hear you. It is on. Best, best. That is the number. 
total check <coughs> is one million nine hundred seventy-four thousand a year. And then you the the due tos the due tos are what is owed to other accounts. So we got as of December thirty first, you're saying we got one million nine hundred seventy-four thousand five hundred eighty-seven dollars forty-six six and a checking account. So when are these due twos paid? And this year? They're not. They're just they're accounts that are set up into the, the general fund with those budget amount dollars. Like right here where you got one billion or one hundred and sixty two thousand two hundred and seventy two due to the water store. <laughs> How come, how come there's no totals on this, on the budget and the received to date, there's no totals? I know, that is a mistake I made. So, is that number added to this number? She said she didn't do it as of yet. <clears throat> but it's not total. Okay, we've got, a, we've, got, we've got two conversations going on that the body can't hear, folks, okay. Okay. There you yeah. go. Okay, let's make it quick. I didn't. You're right. It, they're not, it's not balanced at the bottom. That yeah. is an error we made. We didn't notice we did it, but. Okay. I, I can get you those numbers at the office. Right, but the, to me, they should be in the book, and they should be with dates beside them. When we're looking at it, we don't know. With the, we know you see the number, but we don't know if it's at the beginning of the year or at the end of the year. It's at the end of the year. All of them. All of them. But if you look through all the accounts, it's hard to figure out which is the beginning, which is the ending. They're all in there, and it is. I mean, I can print you out a different report when I get to the office. That shows you exactly the bottom numbers. One more. I want to take a forty of that. <laughs> I guess I don't know how to answer or ask the question, but it's like on December thirty first, we had almost two million dollars left in a checking account after all the expenses. All right. I'm sorry. Hold on. Hold on a second. Hold on a second. Abby? What is the 122 that's in the front of the page underneath the other thing I get? What does that represent? Did everyone those, hear that? Those are due to from. From, due to from what? <clears throat> from the water, the sewer, the um, equipment fund. So in actuality, on December 31st, there's really only $770,000. You're subtracting the 122 from the 1.9. In the general fund. But, but everything is in the same checkbook. So one checkbook that all the accounts are right up. Correct. Okay. So and then when reading this, obviously there's a 2023 budget, and then I think they what was expended for the expenditures and then what was received on the revenue. Correct. Is that what you're asking, Brian? To try to understand what was kind of in this. So the 2023 budget is your budget figures that they were we voted on last year. And then the what we either receive for revenue or what we expense throughout the year, correct? That's on page 24. That's the whole, that's the whole format of all of this. <clears throat> so the receipt today is either what we receive for revenue, we're going to be allocated from the but that's what we receive for revenue or what we expense under each general ledger account. Correct. Okay. So your receipt today, Paul, is what we receive in revenue or what we expense last year in expenses. That Which is the two hundred sixty-nine thousand? No, this is just the, whole, the whole thing. Okay. Whole so what is right now in the checking account? Right now. It's not. That's why I'm saying that it's in the general fund. But the due to front is all. For this one, there's no number either. Total revenues? Right. What you come up with? 2.6. That's what I added. Up. 
So what's it got? 26 million one hundred thousand. It's two million. Two million six hundred ten thousand. Received today. According to that one. Well, I'm not the. I'm not the. Okay. <clears throat> Obviously, we're going nowhere as fast here. We've probably surpassed that. I added it. That's the total revenue. Okay. Can we? Can we? Can we do a quick thing? Okay, if it's your pleasure, uh, the town clerk has stated that she can do a corrected eight and a half by eleven sheet. Have it available at the town clerk's office for anybody if they have any further questions. What she is saying, such as Abby stated, is the numbers are accurate. They don't match up in the book, and she admits to making a mistake and leaving those numbers out. But the, the present bottom line dollars is are accurate within the book. So unless somebody has some other questions or objects to the eight and a half by eleven and wants to continue this discussion, please let me know. Yes. Was this uh, going to a third party private auditor? Yes. Uh, Thank you. So it's been done. So the audit has been done by an independent auditing firm. They're waiting for the results of that audit to come back. Unfortunately, those are things we probably should have in our town meeting report from the audit, from the, the audit itself. Uh, but evidently, we don't have that. What page? If you turn to page 11, you can find the, the auditing firm. So as you can see, dating on January 29th, RHR Smith and Company have started the audit for the year ending December 31st, 2023, and a complete copy of the draft audited financials. Statements including our opinion there will be available for inspection at the town office. Does anyone have any further questions about that? Does anyone else have any further questions about that? Seeing none, Heather? Why do we always? Did everyone hear the question? And who'd like to respond to that? That'd be your job. Okay, oh, one, one at a time, please. One at a time. Heather? Excuse me, Mr. Derry. All questions will be addressed to the moderator. The side conversation can't take place. Understood? Thank you. I appreciate it. Now, you like to address the moderator? Sure about that question. So I, I, I understand perfectly the question as to I understand perfectly as to why these things aren't available for town meeting day. I concur with that. However, I'm sure they want to make great strides in the future to address that issue. Abby.
I like simple formats. Okay, so I believe it was last year, the year before, that we, the body voted the Office of Auditor out in Sheldon. So those are those are discussions that have to take place on, as far as the process is concerned. That have to be something that have to be worn back on our, our meeting again, be it through 5% uh, of the registered voters or whatever else. Brian, you got another question? I'm sorry. When is the audit going to be available? That's May, June, we don't know that, correct? I don't, they bring them back to me. She is not sure. I'm sorry, Dan? Um, I think they a better opportunity for the select board and the treasurer to look at switching to a fiscal year that would end June 30th. That way the auditors would have time to come in, do the audit, and be available before the draft report to come out. What is our fiscal year right now? February? Calendar year? Okay. Would that also be? Those are discussions that obviously that the select board should consider thinking about. But having said that, I mean, obviously there could be some difference in taxes changing from a calendar year to a, a fiscal year, as long as everyone's aware of this. So uh, if you, Douglas. So up until a couple of years ago, we were doing an internal review. Is that correct? You mean with our own auditors? Yes. Yes. Well, we as a body didn't decide up here to go external. The voters had the opportunity to vote on those positions, and the voters decided to eliminate those positions, not this body up here. I'm just wondering, like, um, if, if, if anyone remembers the discussion that happened within um, the meeting before we voted. Do you know what I mean? Like, what were the pros and cons? Yeah, anyone from the select board want to address that? or? Having said that, I think that may or may not have to go back to the voters if they want to change their uh, calendar year into a fiscal year. <clears throat> Jack. Hold on, we got some IT difficulties. Hold on. No, we want to shut it off, though. Started that that was all part of the discussion back then. Uh, I don't blame her. I would want the town audit before I stepped in there to do the job. And I mean, that's where it all started. Some of that was that discussion. I don't know if any of all the board were here to select board then, but I was. And somebody else I was on the board made it mentionable to me about it. So that was the reason we did it. And we thought if we could get one cheap enough to do it that way, it was easier to do it that way. But like I say, I'm willing to listen to Abby or anybody else in this town. If they think they need somebody to come in periodically and do some town auditing and then professionally get it done, that would work. So every other year, we Okay. Thank you. Heather? Well, 
Well, I guess those are discussions that the uh, select board's going to have to have and, and bring it to the voters, I guess, as to what they want to do. Yes, Mike. I was just thinking, uh, is it possible when you're contracting with an auditor to have a completion date as part of the contract? Mm -hmm. Abby? Three things with me. One, we're all sitting here kind of complaining about this. So if we do decide as a town to go back to internal auditors, remember that when we can't get anybody to vote. I will say that defense that like it is a lot. I work for municipality. My audit gets started the second week of January. And it's a lot of work, but it's a difficult end of the year, so it is doable. Thank you. Any further questions on Article 2? Having no further questions, Article 2, to act upon the reports of the town officers. We've had a first and a second. Okay, sorry for the delay. It was my mistake, my fault. We have a first and a second on Article 2. With discussion being closed, the motion's on the floor. All those in favor of Article 2 signify by saying yay. Yay. All those opposed? No. It appears the yeas have it. Article 2 has been passed. Article 3. Shall the voters authorize the town treasurer to collect current taxes pursuant to 32 BSA 4791? We've had a movement on it. Second, Abby, Martha and Abby. We've had a, a first and a second on it. Is there any discussion? See no discussion. Article three: Shall the voters authorize the town treasurer to collect total current taxes pursuant to 32 BSA 4791? All in favor, signify by saying yay. All opposed, nay. The yeas have it. Article three is passed. <clears throat> Article four. <clears throat> 
Shell of voters authorized total highway fund and general fund expenditures of $2,014,123, of which $1,392,604 shall be raised by taxes. Do I have a motion? We have a first and a second. Any discussion on Article 4? Brian? On your education refund, there's 269,944. Is this money that's already been set aside, or is this money that's in the checking account at this point? What page, Brian, for clarification? 24. Page 24. So we can follow along. We've got the line in the amount. What was the question again, Ryan? It says under educational refund received in 2023. Two hundred sixty-nine thousand nine hundred and forty-four. Is that money that's in the checking account, or is this money that's been set aside for this? It's in the checking account. So the state. Our one million dollars. This is part of that number. Correct. Two or two fronts. No, that's just in the checking account. Not in the two. So the refund, Mr. Deary's talking about two hundred sixty-nine thousand nine hundred twenty-four dollars, has been received by the state of Vermont and has been placed. Yes, the refund has been placed into the town's checking account presently. Any further questions? Brian. The amount that you have for the uh, the administration fee there, is that a six or nine months thing or is that a one year? Is that page twenty four also? Town administrator. Oh page one, Brian. Page nineteen. Thank you. <clears throat> Carrie? What exactly is the plan you have for the town administrator? You have a plan going forward on what you want this person to be doing for that salary right off for $100,000. What is the plan? Yeah, so I'm just going to forego this. So the town administrator is a position that we've discussed for quite some time. Uh, right now, I think that we're one of three towns probably that doesn't have one still. Um, what's that? Injury. Injury <coughs> County, sorry. Uh, this is someone that, you know, would handle project management. Uh, we need someone that can research grant money, go seek that money for the town, bring it in, actually write up those grant proposals. Right now, that's done through the grants and monies that we're aware of but there's money out there that could potentially be brought into the town by the research in that position. Uh, this is someone that, if you've gone to our town website, we would definitely look forward to them uh, maintaining the town website and making sure it's easy to navigate, assisting the town office, uh, the town clerk select board with the annual budget. And I think that if you've gone through this, uh, the book this year, you can see that there's probably a need and some work to be done there. Uh, project management in terms of, you know, we have projects in the town with Mill Street, that's about to go on, undergo some, you know, some pretty drastic stuff with the sewer line upgrade. We need someone that can serve as a liaison for the town for those projects. The bridges, the repairs that we're going to have in the future, someone that can be there during regular work hours to meet with people and actually get the accurate information, report back to the select board, follow up on these items during business hours. Um, am I missing something with that? So there's, there's a lot of opportunity. <coughs> Can I sit here and tell you what they're going to do for 40 hours? No, I can't tell you what the town clerk is doing for 40 hours, but we're asking for the trust that we're going to put the right person in the position where they don't need to be watched the entire time. They're going to be doing work for the town, and they're going to be a, an addition, an investment. Okay, I have another question. Jack? I mean, you just 
got a three-man board that handles what two five guys are trying to handle. And they ain't been much, much different change in the town. As far as when we, some of us go on the board, we did some pretty good projects. I guess if you're gonna sign up to be one of these board members, you ought to be able to do the job. That's my personal opinion. Thank you. Yes. So how many grants the Sheldon get a year? Like one, two. Currently, somewhere in the neighborhood of the road. Uh, okay. Well, yeah. fire department. <clears throat> and don't we have a road foreman? We do. And they can oversee the road, the bridge, and all those projects. Well, yeah. I mean, we don't want our road foreman to be meeting for the bridge project. That's not really what we're asking our road foreman to do. We're asking someone project management wise. You know, Hubert can handle, you know, the engineering of the Mill Street, but we don't know how much longer these people are going to be in these positions. So part of this is also a continuation of a pass down. We need someone that's going to have the institutional knowledge in the town that's not an elected position that is not going to get moved, you know, to every two, three years, someone can be moved out, and that institutional knowledge goes with them. This is a full-time professional that's going to be working for the town and is going to hopefully be here, you know, after our water and sewer leaves, if our foreman changes, or something happens there, we have someone that we don't have to worry about losing that with those, those changes. And as far as the grant money, we don't know what money's out there that we're missing out on. I'm not gonna ask our road foreman to write a grant for something that doesn't fall under his purview or he's not experienced in. We didn't put grant writing on the road foreman job description. Outside of the road, one, that's kind of expected. Right. Thank you, yes. yes. No. And as far I work for municipality as well, and there is millions in grants that the state offers if you have somebody to write those grants regularly. Maybe. Who, if anyone, of does the grant searching now for lack of a for lack of a better word? Everyone hear that? He's asking if we have a grant searcher researcher right now. And show them. No. no. We do not. A few years, a few years ago, Andy, we reached out to someone to look into it for us, and they have other jobs because it's part time. You know, they have other areas that are part time or full time, so they're not dedicated to us. So this is someone dedicated. And, and, you know, to and I, I just think that would be coming from a background in the There are people who certainly do research grants. You folks will not believe the amount of money that is out there for grant. I, I don't I don't care whether it's the color of the heavens that you're putting on the walkway or or what. But you need an individual in a supervisory role as well as an overwatch role, which is what I think you will get at. Uh, to ensure that the town is getting its full amount of what is out there because the town is not getting it, Highgate may be getting it. Nothing against Highgate, okay? I'm just taking it saying, you need a central administrative figure that can act as a conduit for several special that person, that you got to be head hockey for more than just it. You can't, you just can't blow out all these individual assignments to people who really have no idea how to go about getting that done. It's a job in and <coughs> of itself. Just the grant portion, notwithstanding what you were saying about the roads and bridges and everything else. And you got to put your trust in somebody. Somebody has to be at the top. Whoever you should be. Thank you. Questions that haven't been asked yet. Dave? Basically, what we're saying is that this person's salary will bring us in more money for the town. Basically, it's a very small grant. Did everyone hear that? He said basically, 
the sixty thousand dollars they're proposing his his thought process is that this grant researcher writer or whatever else will bring in uh, that amount of money is at a minimum if not more am i correct on that thank you any other questions I'm just looking for someone who hasn't asked a question yet brian i know you're there joe uh just uh not really a question but uh in the select courts Thank you, Katie. Uh, <laughs> she did. Um, so I'm just wondering if the, the mentality is that this person's salary would bring in more money based on the <coughs> work that they were able to get. Would this be a position that we would reevaluate every year in case next year at town meeting the position didn't go as predicted? They were only able to get one grant. They didn't even have Would this be a position that we could look at every year and decide on. There would not be a minimum grant money that they need to bring in to keep their job. No, but I'm saying, like, as far as we're assuming right now it's going to be very successful, let's say it's not, would this be a position we could vote on next year if we wanted it back into the budget? This is something where the grant money, the grant money, that's one aspect of it. It's a positive. It's not the entire job. Right. There's the assistant other thing. That's just one, one of the duties that we would look forward to. As far as keeping their job on a year-to-year -year before we assess it and keep them, I don't think you're going to bring in candidates who are willing to sacrifice their full-time employment somewhere else for a job with the town if they know that every year their position would go away. So there's not, um, and so this wouldn't be something you would agree about each year. I mean, That's my question. I mean, everyone, every full-time employee with the town, their performance is evaluated each year. So as far as a full the performance evaluation, that would happen every year, but we don't bring any full-time employee back to town and say they only scored so high on performance evaluation. Okay, Greg. Uh, I think what the board of trade will do is round up a bunch of things. Typically, down is seeking highway grant. There's a class two highway grant that's applied for every year. Whether you need it or not, you don't know. But you will receive it for at least once every three years, typically. But you need to apply every year. If you have a bridge, typically you apply for them every year, but you don't all get them. But there's something that needs to be done every year. And the board goes over, the board reviews all projects that could be done in the town. And if there's grants that they can apply for, they will be done. Grants are not always available. <coughs> you may not want, you may be able to get a grant for something, but it may be something you don't really want. Because after you get a grant for something, then the town has to maintain whatever you built. And maintenance, it's all like, oh, we do this, we do this, we do this. You get the grant. Well, part of the grant was you can get a max fund, or and then you got to maintain this thing after you get it. Well, no, you can care what you wish for. So, but there are grants, and it would help take pressure off the road crews. But they're basically there, they're there to maintain the highway and the off. They don't have to do that grant writing and check the deal over there. And then, so, and then there's another opportunity where this administrator is going to help smooth out yes. the administration. Uh, if we have a transition in the clerk's position, the administrator might, that would help transition into a new clerk. Uh, and the same thing with the board, if the board changes, the administrator would help, you know, stabilize the board, if you will. Uh, there's a lot of things that you could do. Uh, and in, in my opinion, uh, like Joe says, they all have jobs. You know, I know the see had a bad year. Barn burned down, he's been busy with that all year. Typically, he would 
who spent more time on the board this year. But he's had a lot of issues. And, it's it. and you know, they can break down the line. You know? And it's like, wow, well, I gotta, I mean, I have a retirement. I used to, when I was on the board, you know, I'd break away, you know, I'm, you know, two miles down the road, hey, go over the dog, or this, or this, or that, or whatever, you know. And he'd take care of that.
and the board needs some help taking care of things to keep things going smooth for us. So I think, I, I think it's great that we don't know about the full time piece of it. I mean, this college that I work for were a lot larger. But I think it's great that you have somebody to help you guys keep continuity, to research some stuff, and keep things. That's kind of my opinion. Thanks, Dan. Is it Derek? Derek, did you have a question? No, I might have had an answer. Uh, hi, my name is Derek Murna. I come from the town of Coventry. Uh, just some insight on the back. For auditing, um, I don't know if you recognize or remember the name, Cynthia Diaz. It's a lot better to have an external auditor come in like every three years just to see what's going on before you have the feds come in and swarm your town and tear apart your town court's office. And just, it's, it's a bad name, but going back to uh, grants and funds, I just met a guy who, a uh, real interesting guy, uh, John Stricker right here. He said uh, he's a writer. What he does is he writes for businesses to get him grants and funds. So uh, if you have some insight, please stand up, because I don't. Yeah, absolutely. Um, yeah, I was gonna come up and talk to you guys afterwards. Um, but yeah, I do have a background in that area, not as much. Finding the grants or the proposals that you're writing to, but I would happy, um, be happy to contribute to that if you're the team where that is done on a regular basis. Um, or, you know, free of charge, that's something that would be useful. Like I said, I, I don't have the background like going out and finding them as much, but once something is located, you know, lots of people say, hey, this is something we need to go after. I think that would be helpful for that. All the other stuff, maybe not quite as much, but if that factors into the decision of you know, this person or multiple paths, it sounds like. Thank you, John. So John, just say so if you didn't hear, John is a grant writer, not a grant researcher, and there are two big differences between the two. So, any further question, Douglas? So the town administrator, I would hope that they would um, have a report in the in the book every year, so we can see what they're doing and what they try to do, and just to kind of keep us updated. That would be great. Yep. Thank you, Brian. It's in the budget, so like any other line item in the budget, you can no, pass the budget. No, but the administrator itself, to the taxpayers or to the select board? <clears throat> it's not a requirement. That's why we put it in the select board letter to actually let you know this is what we want to do. It's in the budget as a line item. It's still up to the taxpayers to vote on the budget. So, so if you look just for information purposes, if you look on page seven, if you haven't already, on the third paragraph for the select board letter, where they mentioned the town administrator position and there was no attempts on their part obviously to not discuss it because they brought it up in their letter. So the third paragraph will give you a little insight as to what's going on. Andy. I really didn't hear that question, I'm sorry.
please. I understand, because we have discussions. You have a you hire a grant writer, right? The part time that's what it is. We look at all those good duties and talk about continuity, the, the institutional knowledge I've talked about. When, when assistant town clerks, when they say we're done, you know, build the website, now we're looking for someone to maintain the website. Now we're looking for someone to do all this, we keep piecemealing all those things. We're on different deadlines and timelines with being different people in those positions. It's just putting everything under one umbrella, so it's under one person for you know that, that continuity. As far as the town, the meeting, the minutes, yes, some duties would transfer from other positions under this administrator. So it would now be the town administrator who's attending those meetings, taking the minutes, agendas, and a central point that it's going to put new duties under that person and probably take some of those things off his plate. <coughs> Yes. What are the other towns in Franklin County that do not have a town administrator, and what is their size compared to us? Oh, Franklin? Off the top of my head, I don't know. Franklin doesn't? I don't want to speak. Franklin, Berkshire, Albert. And when we had these discussions, we spoke with Enosburg and Fairfield and Richford. We spoke with uh, Richford. Yeah, I know Fairfield. Okay. Well, we spoke with we spoke with Fairfield, we spoke with Richford, we spoke with Enosburg to kind of get the perspective on different sized towns and needs. You know, Enosburg Village obviously has different needs than Sheldon does when it comes to the like, development of commerce with them going on. And Fairfield was kind of a similar size. I wanted to see like how are you guys handling with a full time position. Richford was the, the municipality that advised us not to go with a, a part time because the candidate pool when they did a part time versus a full time was drastically different. Um, and then it impacted, you know, once they had it, they, they had their administrator and their grant writing position or something for like a year. And once they had that full time uh, person in that position going to a part time, basically the candidates, it, it just wasn't desirable for what their outcomes were like. Um, so I, I want you to know that we did, you know, kind of canvas the surrounding areas for different perspectives on size, need, et cetera. And uh, the consensus is pretty much that, you know, it's a beneficial position for Sheldon to have and it's worth the investment. So a couple of things. You said that if you pass it on to like one of these assistants, they could be gone and you wouldn't have anything. That scenario could be the same with the town administrator. You could hire somebody and then they could just be done and gone and then you have no money. So you have the same scenario. And as far as certain things not being in job descriptions, like the road form and the grant writing's not his, there's usually a little line at the bottom of job descriptions to set any other duties assigned. So that pretty much covers it. I mean, I'm fine with it. If we don't have really a choice, if we vote for the budget that's happening, this person's not going to be elected anyway, except to you guys, if we vote for the budget. So we, we really have no say other than voting for the budget anyways. No, you can pull out, I believe you can make a motion on the line. Okay. So, as far as the, the town clerk and you know, the assistant town clerks, that's still an elected position. So you know, that's on a different timeline than some of this full-time appointment budget I'll start here. Again, if I'm correct, everybody in this room had the opportunity to go to the select board and draft the budget to put a ton of it to the drain, correct? So oh, everybody okay. had the opportunity to discuss if they wanted it. Thank you. Did Greg? You, this isn't something we've seen over the last yeah. month. It's been discussed for quite a while. Greg? Questions have been called. Discussion has stopped. And I'm looking for my papers. Pardon me? On Article 4. Yes, I see that. You need a second on this motion? Yes. Is that a second? Yes. Okay. We have a second. Done by voice vote, two thirds majority. We've called the question on Article 4, which is uh, 
It's a voice vote. Yeah, it's a voice vote. You can ask for a division. Shall the voters authorize total highway fund and general fund expenditures of two million fourteen thousand one hundred twenty-three dollars, of which one million three hundred ninety-two thousand dollars and six six hundred four dollars shall be raised by taxes? There's no discussion. All those in favor, signify by saying yay. Yay. All those opposed. Question has been called and passed. Okay, let me back up a little bit, okay? We called the question. Anybody have any questions about calling the question? Are you all familiar with what's going on here? Debate stopped upon motion to call the question. A second was made, two thirds voice vote, voice vote majority. So we've passed the motion to call the question. Understood? On Article 4. Now that we're calling Article 4, now that we've done this Article 4, we're going to call on Article 4. Everybody understand? So now that's been called, now the question's been called and we voted two-thirds majority to call the question. We're actually calling the question now, which is Article 4. Shell voters authorize total highway fund and general fund expenditures of two million fourteen thousand one hundred twenty-three dollars, and of which one million three hundred ninety-two thousand six hundred four dollars we raised by local taxes. All those in favor of Article Four, signify by saying yay. Yay. Opposed nay. It appears the yeas have it. The yeas do have it. Article 4 has passed. And finally, Article 5, coming into this, I looked at the agenda, I said, let's be quick and simple, but evidently nothing is ever quick and simple in today's life. And here we are, about an hour and a half later, we're still going out strong on five articles. So Article 5 is discussion of an other non-binding business. What's your pleasure? Brian. Like that, 26 or 27 select board meetings you had last year, all but three went into executive sessions for personnel problem. Do we have an answer for that? Uh, you said out of the 26 meetings they had last year, I believe, uh, all but three went into an executive session at one point in time during the meeting, correct? Correct. Well, let's, let's answer the first question, and then we'll get on to the second one. The, the meetings that went into executive session, we had uh, discussions about hiring this position that we're talking about, some of it. Uh, some of it was highway personnel, um, what we're going to do, you know, uh, we, we had a new hire. When did he start? He started in October and um, just different things like that. It was not all problems with the highway personnel, some of it was just personnel issues <clears throat> with our um, employee manual and stuff. Some of that was that. All that needs to go through a second session? Well, it doesn't need to be on camera because we're discussing Discussing employees. So. But there were no actions taken, according to the minutes. There was no what? Action taken on the executive no. session. You said we're going into executive session. You said for how long? But there's no answer at the end. Well, there was on some of them. We, when we exit executive session, we said we discussed highway personnel or or whatever, we had a, a reason why we were in executive session. What was, the, what was the result of that? That doesn't say that in the minutes. It doesn't say it. Some of that stuff was personal with employees. That doesn't need to be out in the public. We have that much problem with 
Personnel? I said some of it. I didn't say it was all. I said we had some stuff for that guy. And some of it was discussed in this position, and no action's been taken on it. A lot of it was discussing whether we needed full-time, part-time, whether we needed one. Um, yeah, it was just stuff like that this year. Discussion of who the applicants may be or who they are and who we wanted to possibly get into, who we would maybe want to use. That was discussed in the executive. And that's why it's in executive because it's public, maybe it's private knowledge. You know, you wouldn't want to apply somewhere and then go somewhere down the street and find out that your name is being laundered into um, being a town manager or something like that. I mean, it's, it's private, so that's where it's supposed to be. You know, so that way things that are discussed in there are being discussed between us five. But this is a public, this is public knowledge. Not until a decision is made. If we do hire an administrator, it'll be public. But until then, all those applicants and any other information we're gathering isn't public. That's been advertised. That's right. It's been advertised, but it had, the position hasn't been filled. Any further questions? Business questions? Nancy. Can you tell me how many hours the sheriff's department is hired right now? Sheriff's hired. We've asked for 20 hours of coverage. Yeah, we've we've asked for 20 hours of coverage, but he when we. Um, discussed it with him, he couldn't guarantee, it depended on what he had for health, and whether he could cover that amount or he could cover more or less. He's had, uh, or what was last month, it was more than that, wasn't it? Last month was like 40 there. Last month he had us covered for 40 hours. And it, it changes every month, because it's based on his availability. You know, we have, we asked for 20 hours, and we may get it and we may not, but we knew that going in that we may not get, he was up front with us about that, that he may not be able to even meet that. But it's better than the last regime that we had. So how that, do you guys decide how many hours are actually in our town that we get to? They send us the building. They send us the building. We could request you know, the records of what they said it's actually done. <clears throat> Instance brought up to us, or we figured that we need to go do that. Uh, you know, as far as the coverage of the sheriff's department, we reached out to we had discussions with Swanton's and Alton's VSP. Um, and as far as what's available and what people can actually provide to us, we went with, both, with the best option that was available that could provide us with the town's funding for. It. Now, we asked for as much as we could get because obviously there's concerns with speed on 105, uh, you know, the incidents that have happened up on Crow Hill. But um, there's been enough, you know, concerns in the town where we're trying to get as much as we can. We've signed up for as much as we can get and who we can get it from. So we're, we're now going down to the site and I'm sure when they're here they're not going to get the job. Is that correct? Correct. Right. You know, they send us, they send us like dates. That they do send us a date when they can get it? Any further questions? Yes, Heather. For the what money? DARPA money. DARPA money? Yep. Page 30, the $664,000. Good plan. Yeah. 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 Did you say DARPA with a D? I'm, I'm familiar with ARPA fund money enough. ARPA fund, okay, all right. Page 30? Yeah. So, 
What do you need to know, Heather? What are, what are we doing with it, or what have we done with it? We, um, when they did the, the culvert down on uh, Hill Road, we used the match that we needed for that. Um, we've used some of that money for to help the fire department with their new truck. Uh, what else have we used it for? So the $684,000 that's on there is what's still left in there. Yeah. 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 Yeah
If there's no further questions, it's been my privilege to see all your smiling faces once again this year. At this point in time, I'd entertain a motion to adjourn the 2024 Sheldon Town meeting. I have a question to my right. I'm sorry. It's not really a question. It's a suggestion. But maybe it's some of that ARPA money, ARPA money, whatever. ARPA? I think we get what you're putting down here. <laughs> That's a new school day. No one is. Any further discussion? If not, I'm going to take a motion to adjourn this year's meeting. So moved. So moved. Seconded. All in favor say aye. aye. Opposed nay. Thank you very much.